Hello everybody. Hello from Bryson City. So today we're going to do some plain air painting. Um, I am up here at my fire pit. Kind of getting stuff set up. So uh Um, for plain air painting um, you don't need a whole lot of stuff um, a lot of websites out there will try to um, sell you all this different equipment um, different easels different setups uh, if you're a watercolor uh, enthusiast or painter they'll try and sell you a table with a uh, attachable palette and an attachable umbrella that has the brand name of that on there so that other people who know what that is can see it. Um, there's a lot of a lot of product involved. Uh, some of it is great. Um, you know, it's nice when you're painting to have a shady spot. So an umbrella from time to time could be nice. Um, I like to approach it a little bit more Spartan than that. Um, essentially, um, a bag with your supplies in it. Um, if you're working on a large format um, large for me would be anything larger than 9 by 12 um, I would recommend getting an, uh, an a travel easel which are very nice or a French easel um, if you are interested in um, besides watercolor one of the popular plain air ways to paint is with oil paints and if you're interested in that a French box easel is is great because all your paint is stored right there in the in the easel on the box and um, you don't have to carry an extra bag or anything like that. You can even transport your canvases and stuff attached to the easel. Um, if you paint on board, um, you know, whether it be masonite or, or some kind of panel um, on a box easel, you can usually take two to four, uh, depending on how you attach them. And so you can transport out wet paintings, wet oil paintings, without them um, uh, getting on you or, or causing a big mess. Uh, with watercolor, it's a whole lot simpler. Uh, watercolor, you just show up with your pad, you show up with some water, some brushes, and you make it happen. Um, one of the things that's kind of important and is nice uh, is, um, you know, they have a place to sit. Um, of course, I'm close to the house, so I have a couple couple plastic chairs up here, a couple uh, lawn chairs kind of thing. But um, if, you, um, if you are going to do some plein air painting, I would recommend getting a camp chair or some kind of little camp stool um, I have a folding camp stool I don't have it with me right now but um, the folding camp stool works great because it actually works um, if you got another chair it can work like a little table or a little tabaret so you can put out all your supplies and everything on so I'm going to get everything set up I gotta dump some rainwater <laughs> move some stuff around um, let me turn around here so you can see what I've got and where we're going. So this is my watercolor. So make sure you bring some water. Um, there may not be water where you're going. And then make sure um, your bag of supplies. So this is typically when I go out to do watercolor. This is what I grab. This old um, canvas bag. I think I've had this going on 20 25 years now easy so but inside a couple different watercolor sets a couple different sizes and sheets of watercolor paper um, different stuff that you can use um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my one of my favorites right now this um, you can pick this up at uh, Michael's and it's um, a six by nine it's a nice nice size nice format to work on so this is what, what we're going to be working on today. So we'll put that over here on the table. And then um, also nice to get and keep in your bag are a couple of little dishes. They don't have to be um, this kind of a dish with the little, little cleats here to hold your uh, paintbrush to keep it from rolling and stuff. You can actually use, if you have um, a small can, like let's say from Tuna, or something like that um, that uh, you've you've used you rinse that out you can uh, use that instead of this like I said these were a gift so I got to use them <laughs> you know you know how that is and then your brushes um, I like to take 
my brushes in uh, in the brush box. So I have this one, and this is where I keep all my brushes. So the Windsor Newton, got some long handled, and also have some short handled ones over here. So we'll just sit that over here in this other chair for right now. I'm probably only going to use a couple of those brushes. You can um, reduce the amount of brushes. If you get a little set, like this Windsor Newton um, watercolor set, this is actually a travel set. And if I can get it open here, it comes with a paintbrush in it. So you're good to go. So you already have um, paintbrush, everything you need, and it's all in this little case, which is pretty cool. And then I bought down at Ash Store. Uh, my wife bought me this little set, which is pretty cool. It does not come with a brush, however, it folds out like you wouldn't believe. And all these little pans here would be great for mixing colors. Um, you could drop a little brush right in there if you had one. Um, easy peasy ready to go and it's also got this nice little hook on the back so if you wanted to run that through your finger while you're holding it or if you had something to uh, to hook hook that onto like on your easel or your setup or your stand so today for my instruction I think I'll switch to using all those brushes I'll just use this little kit here make it easy so all right I'll set the bag down here up all these brushes but yeah it's always good um, I think when you do plain air painting if you're gonna go out into the world to um, take some extra stuff with you you never know what uh, what you're gonna see what you're gonna be inspired by what's gonna happen while you're out there um, you know you could go for a hike and lose your pad you could go for a hike and lose big box of brushes lose some brushes so i always recommend just take a little bit extra take some backup don't keep it all in the same spot it's kind of like um you know kind of like when you camp take a variety of different stuff so all right let me turn back around here slide this over to here so we're going to get going here today with some plain air painting and I have some I'll show you what I'm going to be painting I have a couple of these nice trees up here weeping spruce and this one over here I think it'd be pretty cool to kind of capture this as a scene so that's what I'm going to be painting today so Let me reduce the tripod a little bit. Get y'all closer to my paper. All right. So, plain air painting. Like I mentioned, it's good if you um, if you have a tripod. It's it's better. I like this six by nine because I want to be able to hold this in my hand. I feel more confident holding this in my hand than wedging it into a tripod. Or into a into a little portable easel, so um, we've got that. We got our dish over here, so water into the dish. Now, whenever you're using these watercolors before I know when I did the demonstration I used a similar pan set uh, it's a little bit bigger but um, one of the things I didn't mention and should tell you is uh, I always put a little water on them to start off with kind of wake them up all right so we got that going and we have this if you wanted to put more water um, you could use this it actually clips up here so you have a spot right here to uh, 
So hold this with your thumb. So then it's more, more, more like a palette. All right. But that's why I have the table. So we'll just sit this down here. Put this right here. And we'll start off uh, a little water on the page. I'm going to work a little wet today. So I'm kind of looking at the tree. And I'm sort of painting it on there with just water. And then I'm going to come back through and pick up some of this green to start off with. And then we'll just come right into it. Just like that. And a little bit of this other darker. As you can see where it was already wet, the water's kind of blending it together, just like that. Add a little bit more water. We'll put some right up here. Let it run and do its thing. All right, now I'm going to pick up a little bit, a little bit of this brown. Let me, if you feel like the way these trays are set up, feel like you have too much paint, use the other end of the tray to kind of clean some of it off your brush. And you can come back through. So I'm just going to go through there with a little bit of that brown. And then I'm going to come through on the bottom here for the ground. Very quickly. Sketch that in. Pull the water. Let it move around so the water coming off of there has a place to kind of run and dissipate into. Let's get a little bit of this yellow. Add some yellow in that around all right now we're going back up here to the uh to the, to the spruce and uh, i've picked up some some blue and i'm just going to kind of go in with this blue i'll probably do a couple a couple layers like this just because this is working Working a little bit more on the wetter side, kind of want it to blend together. See down here in the bottom, some of that blue mixes with that brown, and it makes a great shadow. Yeah, just like this. There we go. All right, some more water. So over here, the, the road and the ground kind of go down this way. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of that in. Put a little bit of this green in here too. There is a fairly dark holly bush over here. We'll sketch that in with our, with our paint and our little short brush here. We'll sketch that in just like this. Let the water take over and kind of Move it around, let it uh, let the water kind of dictate where this is going to be. Now there's one of those forsythia bushes, uh, which I think people call yellow bells. It's sort of already starting to turn into leaves, but I want to kind of capture that. So I'm going to come through with the yellow here. Just mix a little bit into the... Uh, rest of the work here All right. and uh, a little bit of this yellow oak just like that so I'm just adding more water also kind of cleaning out some of that yellow ochre from my uh, brush I'm going to pick up some more and bring it over here and some more right here and then add a whole lot of water now here's a trick for watercolor that as your watercolor dries the color kind of becomes permanent um, you have to kind of 
really try and agitate it with the brush to get it to move again. But while it's still very wet, you can get your paper wet and hold your paper a direction. Of course, it'll all flow that direction. It's great for uh, kind of washing out colors and um, um, creating a lot of color. And see, of course, I'm holding it this way and it's starting to concentrate. So we'll, we'll let it go that way for a minute. And while it's doing that, I'm going to add some more green over here for this holly. I'll go with this uh, darker, darker jade. I'll also come in for a little, little line of that just like this. blend soften it up a little bit blend it away there we go now the uh, yellow bell bush here in the middle is kind of dried out a little bit so I'm gonna come back in here and pick up a little bit of this uh, burnt sienna wonderful orangey kind of color very nice and then a little bit more of this blue I think this is French ultramarine. We mix the two together. And if you notice, it, it, it kind of goes black. One of the great secrets of painting is to mix really nice shadows. Um, French ultramarine and burnt umber. I think I've mentioned that before. We're going to come through and put a few few lines and I'm also going to come back and get some of that burnt sienna onto my brush like I said I'm just looking across the way over here at this uh, yellow bell bush trying to capture a little bit of it let's get some of our sap green I think that's what that is more of that very light yellow Mix the two together. There we go. And we're just going to come through. These are going to be our very fresh spring green leaves on the forsythia bush here. Just like that. All right. Might add a little bit, of, pick up another little touch of that. Maybe come through and very lightly apply it down here. Maybe some more of this yellow too. So it blends in with this jade green. Just like that. When you're working with uh, wet, wet on wet watercolors, um, I think it's okay to kind of be um, a little on the abstract side. Um, you're trying to work number one you're trying to work quickly number two um, it's okay to let other things kind of happen and appear that if you were trying to be more realistic wouldn't happen so we'll get this all in here like this Uh-oh, our neighborhood woodpecker's back. I don't know if y'all heard that. There is um, several, well, at least one that I know of, maybe more, um, pelleated woodpeckers that live up here where we're at. And um, it's really nice in the, in the evening and then sometimes in the morning too. You get up and you can come outside and hear them calling to each other. But then also you can, you can hear them working on some of the dead trees. Sounds like somebody's knocking on your door trying to get into your house. <laughs> so I'm just mixing some of this uh, um, brown, uh, the burnt umber, and the blue with the burnt sienna I mixed earlier. I'm just kind of coming in to put some of these trees that are here in the background. 
just dragging them right up through that blue that I sort of put in for the sky. If it mixes and blends, great. Not going to stress about it. Not going to worry about it. Now our pine tree that we originally, our spruce here that we originally painted, has dried out a little bit. So I'm going to come back in with some of this and put a shadow down his trunk as well as come in and pull some of this across on some of these limbs. And then I'm also going to come back through and then get some of this sap green. French ultramarine. More sap green. There we go. Now that I have this, we'll come through. This will be nice. There we go. Very sprucey color. If you notice the, the blue and the other colors in here, as this dries, you'll still be able to see those and it'll make the appearance that there's shadows and highlights with these lighter colors. up in some more of that too and just bring it over here to this holly bush. The holly bush is very much uh, more dense than our um, spruce here is. So I'm going to get a little bit of this French ultramarine that we cleaned out just a bit. And a little bit right here. Coming off to the side. Alright. There we go. A nice little quick landscape outside here. Um, I like to go back in these later with um, with a darker pencil and kind of do some highlights and stuff and bring th bring some things out. So um, you can uh, you can try and do that yourself. Uh, one of the other things you can do outside here. Let me see if I can. I'll pull this one off real quick. The other thing great about a pad, you just pull it off, fresh sheet. So we'll put this down here so it stays. All right, pad again. I have all this water that now has color in it. So let's get that. I'm going to put it all over the page here. Okay. And I've mixed up all these colors too, so let's get some of these colors here that I've mixed up. Get them onto the paper and off of the palette, just like this. That way, number one, we're not wasting, wiping away, you know, paint with a paper towel, um, just to you know, clean it up so we can fold up our uh, portable little watercolor tray here and move on to the next location. Let's go ahead and use this up while we're here. I've actually spotted something else and uh, I'll show you guys here in just a second. It's going to be our inspiration. Again, observing from nature. Very important to observe from nature. All right. Um, a little bit of this blue. There's some right here. We'll pick this up and go right down through here. Over here as well. I'm holding it down so it let me turn it around this way so you can see what actually is happening. So you can see the paint is starting to run. Very nice. We'll just let it do its thing. I'm gonna pick up some of this green too. Mix that in here. There we go. Let it do its thing. Pick up some of this burnt umber. French ultramarine here. 
I'm going to brush it in. I'm going to add some of this dirty water to it. We'll just let that blend get happy together. There we go. Just like that. All right. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow ochre. Put this little line right through here. Just like this. So if you're wondering, already wondering what I'm doing, I spotted over here to the side this log laying here with a little tuft of uh, really super green moss on it. So what I'm doing is capturing that. All right, looks very abstract, a little different. While we're at it, I'm going to a little touch of this yellow, this bright yellow, just a little bit. It's good to have lots of color. Matter of fact, pick up a little red, just a little bit of red. Doesn't take much. All right, I'm going to hold it this way. But come on. <laughs> we'll put a little water to it. That'll help it. We'll let the water move the red down through the painting. Here it comes. We'll give it a little guidance here. We want you to go this way, okay? And now I'll turn it this way. Let it all sort of run together, so... So as you can see, it's becoming quite abstract. While I'm at it, let's pick up um, more of this blue. And I'm going to come over here on this side. with the blue there. We'll let it run this way. While it's running this way, I'm going to come up here, add more water here. Same thing, more blue. Making a little bit of a background. Picked up a little bit of the uh, burnt umber, just kind of going over in that blue area where the water is. Let it kind of run and do its thing. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This is starting to dry out, so I need to add a little bit more water to it. All right. A little bit of burnt umber. like that all right so now we've got our little tuft of moss on here so I'm going to come through right here moss is right up there I'll go ahead and start loading up the green here's some of this other green we'll put some there um, carry a little bit of that green over to here background so just like that I 
Now this moss, I'll get it, get it here in a second to show you, but it's just a little, looks like a little knots or something. So I'm just going to come through with this darker green and do a little couple of spots, let them kind of run together. Touch of this red, because there seems to be some red and orange in it too. Not sure why that is. Maybe there's something else in the moss. Working outside in the sun right now is really good because the watercolor is drying pretty quickly. So if I went with another color and came back inside, you know, there's some of this dry area. Uh, with the tip of the brush, you could do some really fine, some fine lines that would be very strong. And you hit a damp area and of course it, uh, it kind of bleeds into it, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to call that one for right now. I'm going to let it dry some, call it good. We'll come back, work on it a little bit more. So let me grab this log. So here is what I was looking at. There's the moss. Here's how the wood comes up and the different textures and stuff from where the bark was peeled off. Little critters in there crawling around eating on it. So, lots of stuff out here to look at and paint. So, so anyway, so that's it for today. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed uh, plain air painting. If you have any questions, um, just post them in the comments. Be happy to answer them. Uh, anything regarding plain air painting or um, painting in general. Um, got some other cool things coming up next week so i'm going to post a list of that later today and as always post your paintings in the comments like to see your work like to see what you guys are doing out there um anything else post that in the comments too <laughs> so um but uh thank you about y'all so stay safe um hope to see you real soon bye